Dan Senor was a senior advisor to Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan in the 2012 Republican presidential campaign. Welcome. Good morning. Lots to talk about first, the budget. I mean, the former Republican chairman of the House Appropriations Committee called it draconian, careless, and counterproductive. What's the point of that budget? Well, first of all, Congress is going to do its own budget. So whatever the president sends to Capitol Hill, Congress is then going to begin its own process. And that's, that's probably going to be the dominant document. The president's budget is basically a political document to articulate his priorities. Now, to put it, things in context, it is not as draconian as it sounds. You're talking about about a 1.35% shift from domestic priorities, discretionary spending to defense spending. It's not massive, but the individual programs take a big hit. You had, for instance, Chris Collins, congressman from Buffalo, New York, the first congressional Republican to endorse Donald Trump, saying last night on TV, wait a minute. My, mo my mother-in-law benefited from Meals on Wheels. That's getting slashed here. So the symbolism... The party can't defend it. Right. Symb symbolically, this becomes important. But at the end of the day, the bigger problem is, if you're not going to reform entitlements like Medicare and Social Security, these programs look like they're taking a disproportionate hit. So if you're going to fund $54 billion more in defense, you've got to find it somewhere. The problem with this, it seems to me, is that Trump uh, is doing things that hurt his own constituency. Right. So, and so, so therefore, he's going to, in the end, move to protect them. Trump basically won, in a sense, by t tearing up traditional Republican orthodoxies. He, he unlocked the Electoral College in a way that Republicans, traditional Republicans could not have done. So now, but his legislative agenda right now is basically a conventional conservative Republican agenda, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell's agenda. He, he needs their agenda because he needed something on the shelf. And this will be the basis for success in his first year, health care reform and tax reform, if he gets them done. If he doesn't get them done, he's got nothing to show for his first year. He can't suddenly say, well, I didn't campaign on these things. These aren't my, are my ideas. It's all he has to work with. And he needs to show success or he and congressional Republicans who are effectively attached. So to the what will he do? I think he's, oh, look, the, the story that doesn't get enough attention is he is working on health care reform every single day. He talks to Paul Ryan every single day. I'm pretty sure he speaks to Mitch McConnell every single day. He's bringing members of Congress into the Oval Office and twisting arms. If the health care reform vote were held today in the House, it would probably be about 15 to 20 votes short of passage. I think Donald Trump has the power both through the bully pulpit and his you know, personal persuasion behind closed doors to twist arms and get the votes. And he's telling these members, if we do not pass health care reform, we probably won't be able to get tax reform done. If we don't get tax reform done, then 2017 will be a wash. We'll have nothing to show for it. How do you go back to your constituencies in 2018 and ask for re-election with nothing to show for it? I think that's persuasive. I think he'll get the votes. I saw an interview with Paul Ryan. He was on Face the Nation. He said, listen, all this back and forth give and take is just all part of the process. At the end of the day, the Republicans will prevail. Do you really think that's happening despite all these distractions yes. that are going on now? Yes. I, it, this reminds me of 1986 tax reform bill. Right. And, and this was this was the big, comprehensive, messy tax reform bill. It was the, the obituaries were written about it for about a dozen times. I mean, like every few months dead, it's over. It's too complex. The politics are too messy. And then it kept coming back to life. Look, this thing is messy. And I'm not saying there is a zero percent chance that it could fall apart, but it is far from over. Again, we're talking about 15 to 20 House Republicans that need to be brought over. And I just think the president of the United States can say, you Republicans mm -hmm. have been campaigning for the last seven years about repealing and replacing Obamacare. Mm -hmm. Every Republican running for any office, including Don Catcher, said they were against Obamacare. All right. So now we have the House, the Senate and the White House for the first time in a long time. And it may be the only time for a long time. We're going to miss this opportunity. We're going to look like fools in front of the country if we can't fix this thing when we're finally in control of the so government. So what's the relationship with Ryan and, yes, and the president today? It is, it is, you know, look, it's a complicated relationship. Uh, obviously, Ryan was not an early champion of Trump's uh, uh, candidacy, but it is a very practical working relationship right now. Uh, and, and here's the reality. Trump realizes he needs po Ryan's policy smarts and the legislative infrastructure Ryan has built and McConnell has built to get bills through Congress. Trump can't do that on his own. And Ryan recognizes that Trump can speak to a segment of the American political electorate that Ryan has never been able to speak to before and potentially deliver support for Republican legislative priorities. So they both so they need, they need each, they other. Need each yeah. other. And they know that. Thank you so much, Dan. Good to be with you guys.